ladies and gentlemen. It is a big, weird, wild world out there, folks. And here we stand, Al Pied del Cañon, ready for anything. I'm Rob, that's the Natch, and you're listening to... The Bravo Show! <laughs> that's right, boys and girls, it is the final Bravo Show of the week. Natch, we made it, dude. We made it. We got here. Dude, yesterday, yesterday, Grumpy Rob came out to play. <laughs> I had three and a half hours of meetings, guys. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. <laughs> Friends, look, if you want to join the show today, let me tell you, we've got a brilliant show lined up for you. You can join us just like Coco Lavanda, like Born to Iron Man, like Min, like Pedro from Instagram. You can join us live and contribute to the content in the show by going to twitch.tv barra forward slash professional bohemian. Could not be any more simple than that, my friends. Um, so what's coming up in today's show? Um, I asked uh, 100 humans <laughs> to name something you might find around a pool. A pool, una piscina. Oh, Natch, una piscina, vamos. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling the summer vibes. Even though I'm not going anywhere for summer, I'll be trapped working. <laughs> I'm still feeling the summer vibes, friends. Um and then in 100 Humans, hopefully we'll finally find out what um, California's overtime law is, um, uh, is, is doing to um, a certain field of work. And we'll also find out um, about um, what Ryan Gosling is saying to critics of the new Barbie movie. Woo! That's incomplete the news. But all that fun, my friends, is in the second half of the show. In the first half, we've got an amazing, a tasty, unpopular opinion today. About ele- um, escalators. Escalator. How do you say that, that in Spanish? Uh, d- hang on, wait. If it's escaladores, I'm going to shoot myself in the face. What is it? No, no, no. Escaleras mecánicas. As- ah, okay. Mechanical stairs. I like it. I like it. All right. Um, uh, so we've got an unpopular opinion about uh, mechanical stairs, about escalators. Um, and, um, and much, much more, my friends. Welcome, welcome. Um, what's everyone saying in the chat? Let's have a look. Um, uh, Coco says, good morning. Bon to Iron Man is here. Good morning, mates. Pedro is here. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy um, uh, happy Friday to you guys. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Uh, Jeffa, hi, guys, he says. How are you doing, Jeffa? Vero's here. Good morning, beautiful warriors. Mr. Cruzando is here. Good morning, all. Um, <laughs> something around a pool. Exactly. Exactly, Bon to Iron Man. Pedro says, Rob trapped for working. Maybe you're someone else's elf. Just saying. <laughs> We're all someone's elf. We're all someone's enslaved elf, Natch. Of course, I have around 20. I'm um, trapped in a cupboard. <laughs> Who prepared the show for me today? And it's a good one. Good for them. I might give them, I might give them a little... I might let them share, all 20 of them, I might let them share a chocolate bar. For, for doing such good work this week. Guys, what a great show we had yesterday with Natasha Pasco, by the way. If you haven't heard that, it's available um, anywhere you can consume podcasts. You can find that show. Natasha, what a great job. And I think I finally figured out the format of when I have a guest on the show. Next guest, hopefully, is Coco Lavanda, Instagram influencer, who's going to be joining us here in the studio. Um, I will talk to you, Coco, on um, on Instagram to sort that out. All right, so let's get into some news. Oh, some ironic news. Natch, are you ready? Let's bring on the irony. Um, th- do you know the, the website Zip Recruiter? Zip Recruiter. It's um, a job finding uh, website. A website there to help you find jobs. Or if you're in the process, in a rec- recruiting process to help you find applicants for jobs. Well, they are cutting their staff by 20%. <laughs> More tech news layoffs. Yeah, but isn't it ironic? Zip recruiter. <laughs> it's, I shouldn't laugh. Poor people. You know what I mean? There are people being put out of work. Uh, Zip recruiter, a prominent job search site, has announced that it will lay off 270 employees, representing 20% of its staff. By the end of June, due to fewer employers seeking workers. Oh, my gods. Do you think this has anything to do with AI, Natch? Do you think people are looking for less employees because um, AI is filling in the gaps? Could be, eh? I'd, like, in, in the three hours, 
three and a half, sorry, hours of meetings that I had yesterday. <laughs> in Within the 10 minutes that I was con- contributing there, um, uh, a conversation about AI came up and what it could um, what it could do to fill in some gaps. Scary world, guys. It's a scary world. Um, good morning, Bridge. She says, good morning. I'm up so I can write. Sort of. <laughs> says the Bridge. Um, uh, how are you doing, guys? How are you doing? Everyone's saying hello to each other in the chat. Guys, if you want to be a part of that friendliness that we've created here, this great community we have, go to twitch.tv barra forward slash professional bohemian. Um, so, yeah, fewer people seeking um, seeking workers. That's worrying. That's worrying, especially at a time of high um, uh, high inflation. Are we going to are we careening headfirst into a global recession? God, I hope not. Uh, this decision, a response to current market conditions, follows a reduction in other discretionary expenses and aims to drive long term efficiency. Yeah, let's see. Sorry for you guys out there who were working for ZipRecruiter or anyone there who works in tech. Massive layoffs in tech. I think I tried to do a few um, rough calculations, but over in the within the last um, uh, three months, around a hundred thousand people, something like that, have been laid off from the big um, tech, fir- tech firms, the big technology firms. That's a hell of a um, that's a hell of a of a dint in the employment market in tech. Um, I don't think there's a single company over here, this is from Min, that isn't looking for more employees. Really? That's interesting, eh? That's interesting. There are certain there are certain fields where there are way, there's way too much competition. Um, God, going back maybe two or three years, or even more maybe, going back, yeah, let's, let's go back maybe five years, um, the market is flooded with people who work in audiovisual communication. Okay, so so people who make videos, people who make TV, people who um, who edit audio, audiovisual technicians, an absolute slew of people out there driving down, um, driving down um, wages, which is a problem, right? Because it's a technical job that requires a high proficiency. Um. So, like, I, if I'm looking for someone to help me with a project over here, I put a CV out and I get, like, two or three hundred replies. It's craziness. Um, further, uh, more recently, marketing. There is just a slew of people, experts in digital marketing, because it became the craze, right? Everybody could um, could transition from... Um, uh, from audiovisual to digital marketing, and everyone became an expert on Facebook ads. Now it seems that the market has caught up and realized that <laughs> online advertising isn't the best. Like nearly every single, did you know this, Natch? Nearly every single platform, Google, Facebook, or well, Meta, that covers Facebook, Instagram, they're all reporting um, dips, l- uh, losses, declines in advertising spending online, which makes a lot of sense because they don't work. We've become ad blind. So what's happened? Well, we have a slew of people. We have tons of people looking for work in marketing that just doesn't exist. And then there are other jobs that pe- people simply can't do. We have a we have a lack of plumbers, carpenters, builders. <laughs> you know, actual trades, the kind of things that never go out of fashion. You know, locksmiths. <laughs> if you want your kids to have work for the rest of their lives, <laughs> forget university. Have them learn to be plumbers. I wish I'd have learned to be a plumber, Natch. I would never be out of work. Never. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Cruzando, here in the UK, there is a lack of staff. Um, companies cannot find workers. Yeah, because of Brexit, says Mr. Cruzando. Can we get a uh, Probo approved for the people in the chat, please? Probo approved. You guys are killing it today. FYI, killing it. Um, yeah, Brexit. You know what I mean? Like sp- specifically in um, in medicine in the UK, right? Um, hospitals are struggling to find nursing staff and doctors and um, and other skilled workers that came from Europe, from mainland Europe, to work in the UK. God, Brexit, man! We're, Britain, UK, go home. You're drunk. You know, get back into Europe. You know, I hope if if Britain does make its way back into Europe, they they are forced to adopt the euro. You know, it'll change. We all have to change the coins. No more sausage fingers on the coins. <laughs> I don't know how they. I don't know how you fit 
fingers like that onto a one pound coin. I really don't. Uh, let's continue. Um, the bridge. If everybody needed, um, uh, I don't know what that word is, goosebova, your way. Huh. Okay, Bridge, I can't read what you're writing there. <laughs> Let's see. Vaughn Radio has created an atmosphere that is almost family. Most of us meet in many of the programs. It's very awesome. Awesome. I'm glad to be a part of that, my friends. Jeffa, here's one locksmith. Oh, there you go. Never be out of work. Jeffa will never be out of work. He's got a job that will always be needed. That's clever. Uh, Vaughn Radio has been a key part of my reconvert back from the other side. This is Bridge. Um, Sasha, in Australia, we too have a lack of nurses, doctors, first response people. Is it any surprise? Is it any surprise when we pay athletes more than we pay people who save other people's lives? You know, when you've got nurses and doctors having to take extra jobs, is it any surprise that there are not enough experts in the field of medicine? After they go into massive, they incur massive debt through education. Is it any surprise people don't want to work in medicine? It just drives me crazy, guys. The world drives me crazy. Um, uh, Sasha says, I think one of my sons is going to be a plumber because his butt crack, <laughs> his butt crack is, always, is um, always showing. His builder's cleavage. Have you ever heard that expression before? It's when your trousers are too short and you bend over and you've got cleavage, you've got that crack. La ucha, I think you say in Spanish, right? <laughs> <laughs> Damn right, Nacho. I deserved one for that. La Ucha, come on. <laughs> All right, more news. Um, do you remember cassette tapes, Nacho? Did you own cassettes when you were young? Yes, I did. Yeah, dude, come on. Who didn't? Well, they're making a comeback. Apparently, cassette sales are at a 20-year peak thanks to the Arctic Monkeys and Harry Styles. There you go. Cassettes are coming back. I Arguably, the worst um, form of, um, of tangible media in the world is making a comeback. Why not mini discs? Great sound quality. Come on. Have we, got, have we gone crazy? So, okay, here we go. The resurgence of cassette tapes has reached a 20-year peak, driven in part by high-selling releases from popular artists like the Arctic Monkeys, and Harry Styles. Over the last decade, cassette sales have increased dramatically, jumping from 3,823... <laughs> so, yeah, nearly 4,000 cassettes were caught, sold in 2012, sorry, to nearly 200,000 cassettes sold in 2022. They're making a comeback, friends. The Arguably, the worst sound quality media is making a comeback. I don't understand. Would you, if you had the choice... Um, to buy a CD or a cassette notch, which would it, which would it be? A CD. Claro, claro. Calidad. For the quality, exactly. Like, either way, I would have to go and buy a player, either a cassette player or a CD player. But it would be a CD every day. The quality is much better. Come on. thing about cassette tapes as the bridge is you can fiddle with them. Yeah, that's one thing. They're easy to repair, right? So if, if a cassette breaks, a little bit of sellotape and ingenuity... You can bring it back to life. If a CD gets scratched, you're pretty much screwed. Do you know, I actually have a tip. If you've got a scratched um, uh, CD, if you get a brass cleaner, I don't know, how do you say brass in Spanish, Natch? Brass, it's kind of metal um, uh, in, you know, kind of a, a golden color. Usually it's used to surface bars and countertops, brass. Um, no? Hang on, wait. You know who's going to tell us? Deeple. Deeple will tell us, Natch. So, brass. Also, like, instruments are made out of brass. Bronze or laton. Oh, I shouldn't have told you I was looking on Deeple. I, I might have got another... <laughs> Neither latho. Okay, so, yeah. Um, if you've got brass cleaner, what that does, if you use it to clean a CD, it will remove a really thin surface of the plastic. And you can kind of file them down to um, uh, to remove the scratches. A trick I've used several times on my old PlayStation 3 games. Let's see what other people are saying. Vero, cassettes and vinyls or vinyls are coming back. Yeah, I mean, vinyls are better sound quality than than cassettes. Cassettes, like, sounded garbage even in the day. Um, or the tape in the cassette snaps and then you're done for. Well, as long as you've got the cassette ribbon, you know, you can always transfer it to another cassette. You know, we all become Laton, says the bridge. See, we got that. Bridge, you're going to get 
a nivelazo. Well done to you. Come on. Nivelazo. All right. And finally, finally, we've got, uh, we'll do one more news story before we get into the um, unpopular opinion. Ooh, do we talk about Al Pacino being a father? He's 83 and he's a father, Natch. He's do, I don't know if him, him and Robert De Niro are still kind of competing with one another. 83, Al Pacino is a father, again, with his 29-year-old girlfriend. Natch, stop judging him. <laughs> stop judging him, people. Yeah, Al Pacino, 83, father again. No, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, uh, about China. China! <laughs> to quote Donald Trump. We're going to talk about China. China is drilling a 10,000 meter deep. Woo! 10,000 or a 10 kilometer deep hole into the earth. Why are they doing this, you might ask? <laughs> For fun. No, China has embarked on a mission. This is from Bloomberg News, by the way. China has embarked on a mission to drill a 10,000 meter deep borehole. A borehole is basically just a a hole straight down, like with a drill. To drill a 10,000 meter deep borehole into the Earth's crust. Marking the country's deepest ever drilling initiative. The drilling operation is taking place in the oil-rich Xinjiang region, particularly in the Tarim Basin. I think I managed to get through that without completely murdering the pronunciation. Good boy. Um, The mission aims to explore the planet's interior and um, penetrate over 10 continental strata, which can provide invaluable insights into the Earth's history, including the evolution of landscapes, climate change, and the distribution of life. Um, so yeah, scientific mission by um, by all accounts. But it's isn't it curious if it is a scientific mission that they've picked an oil rich area to do it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. But interesting, interesting to see um, uh, to see um, that we're exploring more of the Earth. I, you know what? I never understood that. Why haven't we explored the oceans more? Like, don't they say something like ninety percent of the Earth's oceans have gone unexplored? I would love to see what's down there, you know? Do you remember the movie, um, uh, oh, God, what's it called? It's a movie by James Cameron, uh, The Abyss. Dude, I loved that movie as a kid. Do you remember The Abyss? No. Oh, man, it's a James Cameron movie from, I believe it's from the 90s, like revolutionary special effects where they encounter an alien spacecraft under the ocean. And the alien kind of had a way to manipulate water. Wow, great film. Guys, highly recommend if you're looking for a classic movie to watch this weekend. Let's see. Um, that's some nasty bleep, says, um, <laughs> says Sasha. Can't read that on the air, Sasha. Sorry. Vero, brass section, sección de metales in an orchestra. Oh, nivelazo for Vero. Come on. What? Que nivelazo. Um, remember, Al Pacino is the almighty godfather, says Jeffa. Yeah, he is. 83 having another baby. He's actually the father. <laughs> I'm sure he's the godfather to a few. Jeez, Louise. At 83, I'm 45, and, you know, and I can't imagine having a child because <laughs> I feel like I'm too old. Maybe I should reconsider. Maybe I, there's still time for me, Natch, to have my own family. Who knows? If if Robert De Niro and Al, C- Al Pacino can do it in their 80s, I can do it in my 40s. There you go. Um, scientific, Rob. They want to figure out how um, how the oil got there. <laughs> Maybe, Bridge. Maybe. Vero says, Abyss, thank you, Vero. Um, I wasn't swearing, says Sasha. You're Australian. You're always swearing. Come on. <laughs> swearing is like punctuation for Australians. All right. You know what we're going to do, guys? We're going to go to today's unpopular opinion unpopular opinion oh my god friends what is an unpopular opinion it is a brain fat un pedo cerebral un pedo mental i share it with you on my social media um namely my instagram at arroba professional bohemian you guys can um you guys go there you vote and right here we um we make the final decision Today's unpopular opinion is standing still. Uh, oof, how do you say this in Spanish? Quedándote quieto. Right? Oh, Natch. Oh. Nivelazo. Did I say that perfectly well? Oh, God, Natch, come on. 
I've only been here 20 years, you see, so <laughs> it's important I recognize my, my achievements. Um, standing still on a moving escalator. Escalera mecanica. Thank you, Natch. See, I'm learning. I'm a big boy. Standing still on a moving escalator is lazy. Um, uh, okay, I want to quote one comment that I got particularly. Just first thing this morning. It was from um, Diana, a listener of the show um, uh, and a good friend. She said, <laughs> she said, it is, but I'll be damned if I'll admit it. It is lazy, but I'm not going to admit it. <laughs> I got other messages. Um, uh, yeah, do we get into those now? Well, Mia wrote to me again. She said, it's not uh, really about being lazy. We can all benefit from a bit more movement in our lives. But I get that sometimes, I understand that sometimes you just want to chill. So stand if you want and walk if you can. Okay, so there you go. That's a good message. Liam said, lazy? I think not. There's no harm in uh, taking a moment to stand still. In fact, um, we could all use a few more moments of stillness in our lives. Liam, if you're going to take a moment of still... Well, you're not, you're not on an escalator meditating, my dude. <laughs> you know, if you're going to take a moment to chill, maybe try a coffee shop, not an escalator. Um, Blanca says, um, who are we to judge... Um, maybe standing still to soak in their surroundings or have a zen moment. Again, we're talking about an escalator. We're talking about an escalator, not a cafe. <laughs> or a meditation suite. I don't know where people meditate, Natch. I don't know. Bed. I don't know where people meditate. We're talking about an escalator. Come on. Carlos, interesting take. Um, but I see, I see it more as a matter of productivity. If you're in a rush, go ahead, walk or run up those stairs. If not, there is no harm in enjoying the ride. All right, there you go. There's a, those are some comments we got. Um, let me uh, go over the pros and cons from um, from the Probo Show elves, the enslaved elves. Um, physical activity, choosing to walk up or down escalators can add to a daily to daily physical activity, contributing to a healthier lifestyle. Walking on escalators can help move people more quickly particularly in crowded public spaces during peak times. And obviously, standing still just slows things down. Come on. Um, and then finally, in the pro column, choosing to actively navigate escalators can cultivate a more active mindset in general, potentially leading to other health benefits. Agreed. Yeah, the uh, Pro Bush or Elves doing God's work today. In the con column, disagreeing, saying it's not lazy to stand still. <laughs> walking on moving escalators can be risky especially for the elderly children or those with mobility issues you take an elevator that's all i'm saying <laughs> elevators exist um escalators are designed to move people with minimal effort so utilizing this function isn't necessarily lazy if you weren't supposed to walk up them they wouldn't be shaped like stairs my dudes <laughs> sorry fact you know what I mean? The shape like stairs, so you can walk up them. Just saying. Um, for people who are tired, carrying heavy bags, or who have been on their feet all day, standing still on an escalator can provide a brief but needed rest. Okay. Thank you, um, thank you, elves. Natch, can I ask you a question? Why do you think elevators, uh, escalators, were invented? I, from what I can identify, two reasons, right? So you can move people more quickly. Just like in the airport, right? You've got the way you can walk normally. And then you've got the moving floor that makes you walk more quickly, right? Moves people more quickly. Do you think it, it, it's they are there to move people more quickly or so people can stand around? <laughs> what do you think? No, just uh, people to relax. You think... You, oh, so you're, you're one of those. Yes. Oh, oh, you're a stander. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I want to do exercise. I will do the normal stairs. Oh, dude, let me tell you something. This morning, like this comes from yesterday. I was, um, I got off of the metro near my house. I saw three people with basic fit bags standing on the escalator. Like they were on the way to the gym that is outside the mouth of the of the metro, standing still on the escalator. What are you going to do in the gym, guys? I'm going to do some steps. Are you, are, are, what kind of, a, this is why we're going to go extinct, Nacho. This is why the human race is going to go extinct. 
because there are mechanical stairs and people don't want to walk up them. They would rather sit in a glass room and do skets and climb stairs that go to nowhere. <laughs> are we crazy, guys? Is the world gone nuts? Are you lazy? If you um, stand still on moving escalators, I see the chat is full of amazing comments, guys, and I appreciate them. I'm going to get to them as soon as we get back off of this break, my friends. Is it lazy to stand still on moving escalators? I think so. Hey, look, I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying, come on, it's lazy. (laughs) But look, I'm not the one who makes the decisions here. You guys are. So um, when we come back off the break, we'll find out the final opinion. Is it lazy? Is it not? Let me tell you something, friends. Let me tell you something. So many things you could have been doing today. So an infinite number of things. But instead of doing those things, you took the time to spend some time with Natch and I. And it means the absolute world. I will see you in four minutes. Hey guys, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind the scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian, and you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at probo, P R O B O H. Okay, on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. This is the final promo show of the week. I'm crying. (laughs) It's true. The weekend, I feel kind of displaced. (laughs) Remember, I'm a single dude who lives alone, man. (laughs) It gets to around around 8.30 in the morning, and I'm like, who do I talk to? Thank thank God you don't live with me, because my dogs have to put up with a private promo show showing. (laughs) All right. Guys, if you've just tuned in, what have you missed? Um, we spoke about ooh, we spoke about the job site ZipRecruiter, ironically uh, laying off, firing twenty percent of its staff. Shouldn't laugh. <laughs> Shouldn't laugh, but it's funny. Uh, China drilling a ten thousand meter deep hole into the Earth's crust, and the cassette tapes are making a comeback. Cassette tapes are making a comeback. Anyone who works in audio engineering, at some point, I think, have had to fix a cassette tape. Have you ever had to fix... Did you ever have to fix a cassette tape, Natch, as a kid? Yes. Yeah, me too. And I think that's where my my initial fascination with how audio works began. The magnetic cassette reel. (laughs) And then in university, when I studied radio in university, we started with... You will recognize this name. Cool Edit Pro. Right, the original Adobe um, Audition. Um, cool Edit Pro, later bought by Adobe. We, we learned on Cool Edit Pro, and in my first semester, we um, learned how to splice, ta- uh, splice um, magnetic cassette or magnetic tape manually as well. That was fascinating. Anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm getting off point. Um, also, then we, we went into today's unpopular opinion, which was standing still on moving escalators. It's lazy, friends. It's lazy. Um, I will reveal the results of the poll momentarily. It has finished in 10... No, right now. Okay, wow, guys. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'll, re- I'll reveal the results in a second. Um, I will say that on Instagram, 53% of people said it was true. 53. And I think that's really 100%, but people just don't want to admit it. Look, guys, I'm not saying... I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying do it, but remember you're being lazy. (laughs) I mean, that's it. I mean, occasionally I will stand still on a moving escalator, but I'm aware of how lazy I am. Let's not kid ourselves. No, no, no. They're meant to be stood still on. Yeah, that's why the ship likes stairs, right? Good. Good. <laughs> well thought out. All right, let's see what um, let's see what people are saying in the chat. We've got some amazing comments. Get that um, Probo approved finger ready, Natch. Here we go. Uh, let's see, where do we start? Um, born to Iron Man. I think we'll start there. Um, uh, on March 26, 2012, James Cameron made a record-breaking solo dive to the Earth's lowest point, successfully piloting a submarine nearly 11 kilometers deep to the bottom of the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. BTI dropping the info, guys. Let's give him, um, let's give him a Probo approved. Robo approved. 
Okay, on the subject of escalators and whether you're lazy or not, let's see. Sasha says they are made to, uh, specifically for lazy people. Why do they think? Why do you think most pe- most are built next to stairs to see who's lazy and who's not? I'm definitely taking the lazy way. They're not made for lazy people. They're made so people move quicker. <laughs> That's my thought, anyway. Maybe I mis- Maybe we need to speak to the inventor of the escalator. But in my mind. They're, mil- they're built in busy thoroughfares to move people more quickly, you know? And they move. I read this early, later in the chat. Here's a, a fact from Born to Iron Man, from BTI. And he's going to get another Probo approved. Escalators um, don't move too quickly. It's a myth. Escalators move at half the normal walking speed, which is 90 to 120 feet per minute. So they move at half the speed that you would walk. Okay, let's give him a Probo approved. Come on. He's dropping no- knowledge. Probo approved. Dropping knowledge. You know what I mean? If they were <laughs> if they were meant to just be stood on, right, in these busy thoroughfares, they would go at least as quickly as people walk. But they don't. They got half the speed. Come on, guys. All right, let's continue. Um, it's clearly lazy, says Pedro. I, I like the way you guys are thinking this morning. It's clearly lazy, but I think the real question is whether we should fine or arrest people who stand still in the wrong side blocking the whole path. Those people do not pass go, they go directly to hell. <laughs> there is clearly a side of the escalator you're allowed to be lazy on and a side you have to walk on. I hate it. Like Every now and again you encounter someone who's just going to stand there right in the middle or in the walking side still. And you, my friend, you're going directly to hell. <laughs> my unpopular opinion is that they should be shot. <laughs> Pedro from Instagram, he's also getting a uh, Probo approved. <laughs> Probo approved. All right, let's continue. Um, a lot of hello cleaning lady in the background says uh, Miss Sasha Hayes. Um, and I think Vero noticed our dearest cleaning lady is in the background. Can we get can we get um, a round of applause for Rossi, the cleaning lady? Making yeah, you guys like it. I and mean, you know what? I kind of like that you guys send me screenshots of Rossi in the background. It's become my new favorite um, image to receive on my social networks. <laughs> it's like it's like Rossi is is like Bigfoot. You know what I mean? I'm just getting these conspiracy videos with Rossi highlighted, circled in the background of my shows. <laughs> okay, let's see, let's see. Um, let's see. Born to Iron Man, Escalate, Escalator be- uh, began, however, as a form of amusement rather than a practical mode of transportation. I did not know that. Escalators were originally invented as an amusing activity rather than um, a form of of transportation. Interesting. That was my birthday. Amazing, isn't it? Just kidding. It's always someone's birthday, says Pedro. Um, When I go up a moving escalator, it makes me feel like I move faster. Yeah, when you're walking up there, you're going uh, going 50% faster than you normally would. You know, which is why they were invented. You know, not so you can just stand there and block the thoroughfare of traffic. Um, okay, there we go. And do we leave it there? Escalators lazy depends on the size of the escalator, says um, Mr. Cruthando. Guys, all of you guys, so many of you here today, you're all getting a Probo approved. It's a weekend. You deserve it. You've earned it. Probo approved. All right, my friends. All right. So how did you vote? What do you really feel about this subject? Hmm. Is it lazy? N- Natch, can you see... Can you, have I opened your eyes to the laziness that is standing still on an escalator? I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying it's lazy. There are tons of things I do that are lazy. I, I'm, you know, I'm cognizant of it. Natch, can I get your opinion, sir? Here we go. Yeah. Is it lazy to stand still on a moving escalator? Mm, yes. Oh! Did I change your mind or did it... Did no, it... because I, I thought about... I, I think the same, but uh, it's like <laughs> the, your couch is like... It's lazy to be on your couch. But it's, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's find out what people thought. Okay, so I asked you, or I said, I made the statement. Is it lazy to stand still on a moving escalator? Let's get a drum roll, Natch. The beautiful, forward-thinking, amazing, intelligent warriors, guys. 
You said 100% true. <laughs> oh, I love it. So I'm not going crazy. <laughs> yeah, it just, it just, you know, one of those things that just immediately pissed me off yesterday. <laughs> I'm like, the, the, number one, there was a guy stood right in front of me on the, on the moving part of the escalator, stood still wearing a gym bag. I just thought, I just thought, wow, this is why humans are going to go extinct. <laughs> we are just ridiculous. All right, there you go, guys. 100% true. Is it lazy? Yes, it's lazy. Come on. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a little lazy. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's your jam, if you just want to stand there, cool. Occasionally, I do it too. You know, when I'm feeling particularly tired or I'm having a conversation, I don't want to break the conversation because I want to walk, I'll stand there. And I'll um, uh, and I'll maintain my conversation, or I'll just stand there listening to, listening to my music and relaxing. But let's get something straight, friends. <laughs> it's laziness. It's laziness. Anyway, friends, that was a lot of fun. Let's move on to today's 100 humans. Oh my God, guys! It was a long walk to work today across snow-capped mountains and through river valleys. And on that walk, I encountered 100 humans. Exactly 100 human snatch today. And um, I asked them all a question, my friends. I asked them to name something you might find around a pool. Name something you might find around a pool. I asked them that question. They gave me their answers. I am in possession of the top seven answers. Your job in the chat, guys, is to identify those top seven answers. Woo! Here we go. We're projecting ourselves into the summer, my friends. So name something you might find around a pool. What do you think, Natch? A towel. A towel. Did anyone else say towel? No, not yet. Hmm, let's see. A towel. Something you might find around a pool. Yes, it's there, Natch. Congratulations. It is the third most popular answer with three uh with 14. Of the 100 humans saying towels. You found towels around a pool. Um, in Spain, is it true? Because I don't go to kind of... I don't go on holiday, Natch. When I leave the country, it's generally for a purpose. <laughs> is it true in hotels? You kind of... You can reserve your place around the pool by putting your towel there. Yes. This is like a non-written rule. Oh. But it's, it's uh, starting to be... Frowned upon. Yes. You know what? That's going to be an unpopular opinion next week. Is it... <laughs> should we allow people to reserve chairs by using it? Because I that would piss me off. I'm the kind of person who would go down there. Because I hate just being sat doing nothing. I will just want to go. I want, maybe I want to sit and be by the pool for 10 minutes. But I can't sit there because a towel is sitting there. Come on. I'm the kind of person who would remove the towel. <laughs> sit there for a while until someone comes to shout at me. It's better... It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission sometimes. <laughs> All right. So, towel. Well done. We've identified one. Natch has gotten you off the blocks, guys. Third most popular answer. There are another six to go. Coco says flip-flops. First of all, a nivelazo for you, Coco. Flip-flops. Very good. Um, nivelazo. Uh, sandalias, would you say in Spanish? Flip-flops. The piscina would say chanclas. 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 Anglas. Okay, so no evil author for all. Never mind. Okay, I'll survive. <laughs> ah, um, flip flops there. No, they're not. Sorry, guys. Great answer, but it's not there. Um, kids says Pedro. Oh, see, you've just identified the number one reason why I won't go to a hotel pool. <laughs> um, kids, it's kids there. No, it's not. Pedro says chairs, like lounge chairs is how we would refer to those chairs that are around the pool, lounge chairs. So our lounge chairs or chairs, is that there? Things you might find around a pool. It's there, well done. Woo. Lounge chairs, Pedro, is this the second day in the row, Pedro, where you get the number one answer? Oh! Pedro's on fire. 
Second day in the row, he's correctly identified the number one answer. And um, uh, honest, honestly, another honourable mention there for Mr. Cruzando, who also said loungers, which is a colloquial way of saying lounge chairs. And nivelazo for you, Mr. Cruzando. Loungers. What? Que nivelazo. You guys make me feel embarrassed about my Spanish. <laughs> All right, so Coco says a lifeguard. Is a lifeguard there something you might see or find around a pool? A lifeguard. It's there. Well done. Oh, my God. You're killing it, guys. It's the sixth most popular answer with eight of 100 humans saying a lifeguard. Okay. Jeffers says, and I don't quite understand, <laughs> shavers. Shavers. Um, afeitadores shavers unless he means like life preservers like life vests but he says shavers afeitadores <laughs> I think my head is exploding with jokes right now but none of them are suitable for radio <laughs> like look if you want <laughs> you know around some countries maybe they need maybe they need to drop shavers Natch I don't know I don't know <laughs> Is Shavers there? <laughs> no, it's not. Sorry. Ah, okay. <laughs> shavers, my God. All right, let's continue. Um, uh, fins. So, like, you know, like the, um, to help you swim, fins. Is fins there? It's not there. It's not there. Yeah, like fins or, you know, the flotation devices. Born to Iron Man also says a pole boy. Those things that you grab onto to help you swim. Neither of those are there. Sorry, guys. Pedro says warning signs. Warning signs. Of which he mentions there are a lot in the US. And in the UK, too. You know, no running, things like that. No eating in the pool. So warning signs. Are warning signs there? No, they're not. Woo! Feel like I need I'm gonna need to help you guys out. Mr. Cruzando says wasps. Wasps. <laughs> Something you're gonna find around a pool, Natch. You know, if there's no wasps around the pool, they import them from other countries. <laughs> wasps. Is wasps there? Avispas, you'd say it right in Spanish. Alright. Wasps. Is it there? No, it's not. Sorry. Alright, here we go, here we go. Um Lots of uh, lots of splashing around the pool, Natch, would cause these to appear around the edges of the pool. Also, you'll find them um, after the rain. What am I talking about? Ooh, you know that you know it, but you don't know the word. Say it in Spanish, and I'll tell you if you're right. Uh, es que, mm, no me, no me <laughs> ah, okay. So, um, if there there are kids or people splashing in the pool, these will appear on the floor. Also, they would appear after a rain. Uh, uh, what is it? Charcos. Uh, Charcos, yep. Uh, puddles, no. Puddles, puddles, well done! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second. <laughs> second most popular answer. Okay, let's see. Born to Iron Man says sunshades. Sunshades, like the umbrellas, right, that they have around the loungers. Sunshades. And Coco says umbrellas, which are the kind of the same thing. Sunshades, sunshades, umbrellas. Is it there? No, it's not. Sorry, guys. Great answers. Um, there's one answer. You're all going to kick yourselves here. <laughs> so I'll leave that one until the end. You know what, um, what a fun activity is, Natch? To jump into the water. Especially if there are devices. Well, I say devices. It's more like a piece of wood. <laughs> They're on the edge. They help you jump higher and further. But what am I talking about? Piece of piece of long wooden or sometimes like a, a, um, a kind of a plastic thing that that helps you jump further and far uh, further and and um, and and deeper. One of those things. It helps you. It springs you to mo- to jump further. What am I talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about, Natch? Uh, trampoline. Or in Spanish, at least, trampoline. Is that what they're called? I'm talking yes, about uh, a diving board. Yeah. 
a trampoline. All right, there you go. Springboard says born to Iron Man. Exactly, exactly. Diving board, springboard, same thing. Um, I love this answer from Jeffa. <laughs> Colillas. <laughs> Not anymore. It's too unfashionable to smoke. Um, a colilla for my international listeners is um, a cigarette butt. But it used to be, eh? I remember when I worked at Vaughan Town, <laughs> you got to the pool and you'd be picking colillas, cigarette butts, off the bottom of your feet. <laughs> um, it's not there. Good answer, but it's not there. Um, Mr. Cruzando says, men wearing speedos, mainly at Italian swimming pools. <laughs> they should outlaw speedos. You know, that, you know, Mr. Cruzando, men wearing speedos are the reason... Jeffa thinks we need shavers. <laughs> the underwear mustache. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop. It's going to get. I'm going to get crazy. Okay, so, um, uh, me, yeah, men wearing speedos. How's about we say people who are doing an activity match? Pretty much the only activity that is legitimate for a pool. What would they be doing? What kind of a person am I talking about? People sunbathing? Not sunbathing, something they'd be doing in the pool. Swimming? Swimmers, exactly, well done. How can you be saying <laughs> shavers and, <laughs> and loungers before swimmers? Come on, swimmers. Swimmers, swimming, says Pedro. Well done, well done. Um, uh, see you later, Sasha. Thank you for, uh, for joining us. So swimmers. All right, you guys have only one more to go. One more to go. Uh, let's see. Chiringuito says, born to Iron Man. Oh, that's the best thing about Spanish pools is the bar, isn't it? Oh, you know, I went to uh, the, the last kind of Chiringuito, pool Chiringuito I went to. Ironically, it was on the Camino de Santiago. There was like a, a pilgrim a, a pilgrim kind of um, uh, accommodation, but it was attached to a hotel. So they had this bar, and I've never been so drunk in broad daylight on my own before. <laughs> Bad idea. I almost killed myself in that pool. All right, anyway, so is a tuning guitar there? No, it's not. No, it's not. But I'll tell you what is there, Natch. It's the way most people um, define the borders of their garden. Okay? It's how people kind of mark the edges of their garden. And... You would assume they mark the edges around uh, the pool area in the same way. So, yeah, okay, Pedro feels like he's got it. Um, he mentions a word beginning with F. What do you think it is, Natch? Fence. A fence! There you go! Well done, my friends. Okay, let's go down the um, top seven answers. I asked 100 people to name something you might find around a pool. In position number seven, we had a diving board or a springboard. Well done, guys. In position number six, we had a lifeguard. That was Coco. Well done. In position number five, we had a fence. Well done to Pedro and the Natch. In position number four, we had swimmers. Swimmers, people swimming. Something you'll find around a pool. In position number three, we had towels. Well done, Natch, for that one. In position number two, we had charcos, puddles. Well done. And finally, in position number one, congratulations to Pedro. Lounge chairs. Lounge chairs. Oh, my God. We're never going to get to this California overtime law thing. Let's go to complete the news. Complete the news. Okay, guys, as always, I will post all the links fr that I use in the show on my Patreon so you can deep dive these news articles um, for yourself. We're not going to get to the California overtime law, but I will post it on my Patreon. Patreon, professional bohemian, you can find it there. We're going to go instead to Ryan Gosling in California. Okay, so Ryan Gosling tells off. He... he um, uh, he tells off, he talks against, he tells off Barbie critics, critics of the new Barbie movie. He's telling them off. He start regañando los critics. <laughs> but why? Why is the question? Because they've said something. They said he's too something, he's too blank to play Ken. 
Ryan Gosling is too blank to play Ken. But to what? Is it A, too tall? Demasiado alto. Is it B, he's too good looking? Demasiado guapo to play to play Ken. Or C, he's too old. Too demasiado, demasiado viejo. Yeah, Too old to play Ken. A, B or C. Ryan Gosling tells off. Se regaña. He tells off critics. Critics are saying he's too blank to play Ken. Is it A, too tall? B, too good looking? Or C, too old to play Ken? Well, what's your feeling on this, Natch? What do you think? Too tall? You think he's too tall to play Ken? Was Ken is the Ken doll shorter than Barbie? I, 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 the same. About the same height. About the same height. There you go. It's a fact. The Oracle says so. About the same height. Is he too tall? I think he he measures. I did I did check. I don't automatically know how how tall he is. He's one meter. A M. No, he's not one meter tall. That's uh, the answer. <laughs> Hang on, wait. Ryan. Look, we're gonna find out how, Ryan, how tall Ryan Gosling is. Ryan Gosling height. He is. Um, one meter eighty-four. He's one meter eighty-four. He's taller than um, than Margot Robbie, who is also starring in that movie. He's taller than um, uh, he's taller than Chris Evans, uh, Captain America. So Ryan Gosling is too blank to play Ken. Is it A too tall? B too good looking? C too old? What do you think, Natch? Is it uh, too tall? I think. You think A too tall? Um, C is in the re- in the lead. Too old. Hmm. Let's see. All right. Ryan Gosling tells off Barbie critics. He's too. Let's get a drum roll. C old. He's too old to play Ken. Guys, if you want, uh, yeah, Natch, I I lost against the audience, but I beat you. <laughs> sends me into the weekend with a smile on my face. Guys, I'll be back at lunchtime. Um, you can deep dive into that story if you're a member of my Patreon community. Um, and for the rest of you guys, thank you so, so very much for this week's shows. So many things you could have done this week. But instead of doing those things, you took the time to spend some time with me, and it means the world. I will see you this afternoon. <laughs>